Hey guys, I'm driving along here in Wilmington. Just got, got done eating lunch. Had to drive by a house. Take a look at drawing it up for a load calculation. Just double checking. Every now and then I like to double check. Sometimes you take a look at a house and just to be honest with you, you know that the load is correct for the unit they have there. And sometimes you take a look at it and it's like, well, I don't know about that. And sometimes they're so bad that it's really easy. Like you're, you know, thousand square foot with like four tons or something like that it's like well I'm pretty sure that's wrong unless there's no insulation and the house is made just like a metal shack but that's usually not the case so I took a look at the house you know drew it up got my windows and stuff I get back to the office I'll put it down on the uh, the right J mobile software of course the lady wanted to redo her ductwork which I hate because it's really not I'm a company of one, so redoing ductwork is kind of a big deal because it gets us bogged down. And in the crawl space, I'm not real fired up for doing ductwork anyway because it's nasty. And we just had five days of rain, so I want to take a peek into the crawl space to see what it would be like after a rainy period. Now, keep in, keep in mind it hasn't rained for like 24 hours here, but when I opened the door of the crawl space, it was as if I was standing on the beach. It was just water. The water at the front was like four inches deep. And I, and I silently said to myself, this is great because there's no way I'm gonna do duck work in this crawl space. It's definitely going in the attic. And it all depends on what she's gonna say, but I definitely will urge her to choose to go into the attic. That being said, what is this blog about? Because it's not about that. It's called the pursuit of perfection. And what it means is all of us are striving to be great in the field do great work, everything be top notch, top level, the best work we can possibly do. But there's no way that we can do that. There's no way that we can be perfect all the time. And I think especially on YouTube we see guys doing work and you know, you have you have guys out there that, you know, they take you for every type of service call. You see good stuff, you see bad stuff, you see everything in between. And there's guys that just show tidbits of service calls like I've done in the past where you don't get to see, you know, us dropping the screwdriver, almost getting shocked, or shocking ourselves on the contactor, stuff like that. And it's not just perfection, as in making mistakes physically. It's about making mistakes in every part of the field. You know, I'm a company owner. A lot of my associates on YouTube are company owners, and a lot of them are just employees of other companies. And we make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes we might overcharge somebody. Sometimes we might undercharge somebody. And it's not because we're bad people. It's because we're trying to do a good job. We're trying to make the right amount of money. Every day we have to kind of struggle with what is the right amount of money. I want to make good money, but I don't want to screw people over. I can't work all day and not bring home enough money to support my family. So it's a struggle, and everybody's made mistakes before. I've, I've gone back on things saying, man, I, I charged them too much money, and it's been a long time now. It's not like you're going to go back to the door and go, here's your $100 back. And then there's times saying, I wish I would have charged them more money. How am I supposed to eat when I'm working for X amount of dollars? And that's a struggle that's going to go on for all of time because as times change, everything changes. You know, we go from PSC to ECM motors. We go from, you know, tube and fin to micro channel. We go from copper back to aluminum again. And we all have to realize that each, each one of these changes means we have to change ourselves. We have to learn different things. We have to change the way we react to stuff. We can't do things the same way we've always done them. Every unit has more technology in them. The higher sear units have very advanced technology. We have to change. You have to find out what you really want to do. Do you want to work on those units? Do you want to work on only simple units? It's easy most of the time because where I come from, not a lot of the units are even high efficiency. Most of them are older units or just a base efficiency because that's what most people buy. So there's not too much of a struggle. But every now and then I'll see something that's like, whoa, what the hell is this, you know? That's a big circuit board, stuff like that. And you might have to call in and say like, you know, what the hell is this thing? Or try to figure out something. But it's a struggle. And you, you want to be the best you can possibly be. But no matter how good you are, how smart you are, there's always going to be times that knock you on your ass and you're sitting there going, I don't know, or 
and the customer walks in and says, what's wrong with it? And you're like, I have no idea. This light's blinking three times. What does that mean? I don't know, you know. Do I need to call somebody else? Evidently. Uh, no, you just, it's just the way it is. Sometimes you are not going to know the answer like you usually do. On the basic stuff, a lot of us will breeze through it and we can figure things out just from repetition. I don't know, the air handler blew a fuse. Let's check the contactor, that sort of thing. Or the unit's frozen up. Let's see if the blower's running and we'll see if the charge is low. When's the last time you changed your filter? Eisenhower administration? Probably the filter then. You get used to seeing the same things over and over again, but every now and then you get something out of left field. You know, one of these communicating systems. And no matter how badass you think you are, you don't know it all, and you might have to call the almighty manufacturer, the technical rep. Sometimes you and the technical rep will sit there going, I don't know. It just doesn't mean you're not good at your job. It doesn't mean that, you know, anything negative. Everyone has to learn. And if they're unwilling to learn or think there's nothing left to learn, then they're fooling themselves. And I've struggled with this myself. That's the root of the blog because it comes from personal experience. I've struggled. It's, it's really hard to do something for, like me, I've, I've been here for 21 years counting my part-time work when I first started. And going on to a job and, you know, sit down and having to call somebody, you're going to have to get over your pride and just do it. it. doesn't mean you're a bad tech. It's the way things are, like mini splits. You know, you get to a mini split, there's 17 circuit boards inside, and you don't really know what to look for. You don't know that plug 7 has to get 200 volts DC or else something's broken. You're just sitting there going, fans not spinning, you know. It's just the way it is. Sometimes you have to swallow your pride. There is no perfection. So, guys, we're all in the same boat. The thing is that we might give the young guys hell for not knowing anything when they start, but to a certain degree, we're all in that same area. It's just some of the older guys have learned more, but we're still struggling in certain areas. That's one of the main reasons the HVAC community is so important, because the HVAC community is like getting on-the-job training all across the country and all different kinds of systems. I never lay hands on a boiler, but I know a little bit about boilers now because we have, you know, Justin Henning, Steve Lav, different guys working on boilers. So I've seen some of the controls now through their videos. And it wouldn't be totally out of the blue if I ran into one. Oil furnaces. I never would even look at an oil furnace until after I watched Steve Lav's video. And because of him, I've fixed a couple of them. And tell, I thought I was hot shit when I got done too. And they come in there and it's like, Zach, do you know how to work on these oil burners? It's like, you're damn right I do. Now do I? A little bit. Enough so that I repaired them. Am I some kind of oil burner person? Definitely not. But, because of the HVAC YouTube community, I could repair it. And I was pretty proud of myself, I'm not going to lie to you. That's what we can do for each other. To the guys that work on the burners and boilers, I can give you everything I got with heat pumps. Because heat pumps is something that I am very familiar with and troubleshoot them all the time. Zone systems, controls, residential controls. I see a lot of different ones. I use a lot of different ones. I like them. So I'm good at that sort of thing. But some of that heating, hydronic stuff, I have no idea. That's what we're all here for, to reach out and help each other. So that's what I hope to do. Guys, I hope you have a good day. The rain stopped here in North Carolina. The floodwaters are going down, so I'm a happy man.